everyone, uh, welcome to Hot Cross Bun Making today uh, with me, Michelle Wilding from Boozy Bakers. Uh, do feel free to say hi in the comments. It's nice to see who's joining in. Uh, I'll give you all a couple of minutes or minutes or so. Uh, get a bit of water, get you all online. This is a little bit, I would say, of a technical challenge today. So if you're not if you're not uh, baking along with me and you're watching, take notes um, and have a go later. Uh, they're a lot of fun. I think once you've done it once, they're not so difficult to repeat. Uh, and they're great fun to make uh, with a family and kids can get involved. It's a bit sticky, but it's, it's all good. So, um, yeah, let me know where you're from. And as usual, I want to know what the weather's like in your area because it's actually sunny today. Yeah, did a bit of planting out yesterday. Right, what have I got going on? Got quite a few ingredients, uh, but don't let that scare you. I've also, uh, I've got some, I've got the oven going and I've got the proving drawer so I can show you every process. That's my oven just going up to temperature. But I'm going to be able to show you every part of hot cross buns because at some point, you're, if you're baking along with me, you get to uh, pop them to prove for an hour and then you can just enjoy, you can get a cup of tea and watch me do the rest. Um, and I will show you what happens after they've proved. And I, I will explain proving if you haven't got a clue what I'm on about. Right then, so let's get going. Um, first of all, I'm going to move this big bowl out of the way. Um, I've got um, some milk. I've got 300 ml of milk. Now this is warm. It's not hot and it's not cold. Um, because I'm going to use this to activate my yeast. Now, if it's cold, it's going to be really slow to activate. And if it's too hot, it will kill the yeast. So think like baby's bath water or just a comfortable temperature. And I'm going to add my yeast and I'm going to add some sugar. Now in your recipe guide, I've said 75 grams of sugar. We're not going to use all of that right now, just a teaspoon of it. Just a teaspoon into your milk. There we go. Uh, and if you're questioning why just a teaspoon, um, it's again, it's going to help to activate that yeast. Just like, give it a kick start so that we can get on. This is like, I basically take out as much fat as I can about bread. Hi, Debbie. Um, and I try to do one lot of proving and just take out as much of the process as possible, make it really enjoyable. So I've got 300 ml of milk. I've put in a teaspoon of the sugar and I'm going to add um, seven grams of yeast, which is just a little bit more than a teaspoon. Or if you've got a sachet, you know, they come in sachets, just use, just use that. Um, and I'm going to stir that in just to get it mixed up. But it will look a bit like, um, you know, when you get a bowl of Weetabix, like the leftovers, it will look like that, like little bits of Weetabix almost floating on the top. So don't think it's all going to dissolve. So I don't know if you can see, because it's a bit of an opaque mug, but uh, you can see it all floating on the top here. But that is 300 ml of warm milk with a teaspoon of sugar and then our yeast, seven to 10 grams of yeast that I've just added to the top uh, or added in and then mixed it, but it's floated to the top. And I'm just going to leave that now on the side. Now that will start to react. It might not be a big reaction, um, but you should find that it bubbles a little bit. So let's just leave it there whilst we do um, a bit of our, the rest of our process. Good morning, Claire from Devon. Is it sunny where you are, Claire? So there we go, big bowl so you can see what I'm doing. Um, I'm going to add 500 grams of bread flour. Or you might find it's called strong, strong flour. There we go. So strong flour. And to that, I'm going to add a teaspoon of salt. The amount of teaspoons I get through. I've already done this uh, today uh, to make you some. Here's some I made earlier. Hello, Tracy. Hello, Irene. Nice to have you. Oh, girl, we're watching on catch up. No problem. I haven't said either, have I? This is going to make 12. 
Um, so um, you'll have plenty to share. Um, so that was a teaspoon of salt going into 500 grams of bread flour. And then I've got the, the remainder of the sugar, which is all but a teaspoon, 75 grams minus a teaspoon going into that. If you do have any questions as we go along, please feel free to type them in. I'm happy to answer them. I had someone um, contact me in the week to ask about sugar content and whether they could reduce it. Because it makes 12, you've got about six grams of sugar per uh, hot cross bun. You can reduce it a bit, but the sugar will add moistness to your mix um, as well as sweetness. So they might go a little drier a bit quicker. But if you want to reduce the sugar, you can. So that was 75 grams of it into the flour, along with the teaspoon of salt. Um, and now I'm going to add, so I don't need teaspoons galore, two teaspoons of mixed spice. If you don't have mixed spice, you can add, because I go quite heat, because I do like them a bit spiced, um, you could add your own mix, you know, cinnamon, nutmeg, a bit of ginger if you want whatever you like um, and all I'm going to do actually I've got to ask my trusty assistant who's in the wings if I could have a wooden spoon because I forgot I knew I'd forget something I forgot the wooden spoon so it's in uh, the container behind you Evie can you see the cow container on the that's it brilliant when I say cow container it has a picture of a cow on it thank you very much right so with my wooden spoon I'm just going to mix all those powders up there we go. There's a bit of a lump of sugar there, so I'll just get that off. So, oh, I like that smell. There's something that's just seasonal about it, isn't there? Okay. Now, I'm going to add um, 50 grams of melted butter. Oh, Lisa's got a question. Can I ask, I'm making these in a bread maker. The bread maker recipe contains milk powder. Is that essential or can I leave it out? Well, milk powder, do you, is it asking for milk as well, Lisa? Uh, I mean, you can make this recipe as it says, in as a, as a loaf of bread there's no problem it's just an enriched dough so if you want to follow our recipe completely you're fine but i don't think if you're doing this recipe and you're trying to add milk powder no i don't think you do need it um so i've got 50 grams of melted butter that i'm adding in no no milk um if okay sorry i'm back to lisa for a second uh, lisa if your recipe has no milk in the bread this is quite a wet mix um so if it's got liquid in your recipe uh, then the milk powder is going to make it m more enriched um but without knowing the whole recipe i wouldn't be able to advise for your bread maker um yeah, if you want to contact me afterwards, if you're working to a different recipe, I'm happy to help. Otherwise, I'd stick with this recipe and not worry about the milk powder. Hope that helps. Um, so I've got 50 grams of melted butter um, and I'm going to add an egg. I'm just going to add it to the bowl first because I just want to give it a little bit of a, a whisk and combine that. Let's just get as much egg in as possible. If you're doing this and you're not very good at breaking eggs, it's also a really good idea to break it into a cup or a bowl, just so you have to fish out the uh, shell from your uh, from your recipe or your ingredients. So just give that a little whisk. There we go. And then that's going to go in like so. Um, and then I'm going to just give that a stir. Now, this isn't going to make a, um, a dough yet. It's, if anything, you'll end up with vague bread crummy. Kind of, it's, it, it will enrich the dough when everything else is added. At the moment, it'll get a bit lost in the flour. I'll show you. Um, but you might find there's, it looks like very floury breadcrumbs, if that makes sense. So without pouring it all on the computer, you should be able to see that it's kind of gone clumpy in places, but it's not, 
it's not gone like an apple crumble mix or anything. I love the smell of hot cross buns, but not dried fruit, says Vicky. <laughs> it's not for everyone. If you don't like uh, the mixed fruit, add something else. Use chocolate. Use fudge pieces. No, no, you, you, no problem to make these your own. Right. So I've added uh, the 50 grams of melted butter and the egg into that flour mix. And now I'm going to add my um, milk mix with the yeast. So my, I'm going to pour it on the screen if I'm not careful, but it's gone bubbly on top. It's a really good test, by the way, if you've got old yeast that you've never used in the back of your cupboard, um, to get a little bit of warm water and sugar and just tip a little bit in and see if it reacts before you go and use it in expensive ingredients. Right. So I'm just going to tip all that milk in along with the yeast. There we go. Um, and I'm going to give that a little bit of a mix up, but we still need to add um, our mixed fruit. So I'm just getting, I've just given it a little mix, but I'm now going to add my mixed fruit. I'm sorry, I'm headless. 130 grams of mixed fruit. As I said, if you'd rather just use sultanas or you'd rather do chocolate, you can, whatever you like. And then to that, I'm going to add the zest of um, an orange. So I'd use a zester or the smallest one of your on your grater. Um, yeah, the smallest holes. And just, you don't want the white in it, you just want the orange. Um, so just work your way around. Again, you don't have to add this if you thought, oh, I haven't got an orange to hand, I thought I did. Um, don't worry. Um, I actually added uh, a lemon zest to the ones I made earlier because I only bought one orange for today. Um, and I'm also going to add some apple in a minute. Again, you don't have to, but you can. It's all, all these ingredients are optional. I'm actually quite partial to um, chocolate orange hot cross buns. I think they're rather nice. Um, and I like fudge hot cross buns. The only problem is when you toast them, um, it gets messy. But there we go. Right. About there. Smells lovely. So if you don't like the smell of the, uh, the uh, mixed fruit, Vicky, you might like the smell of the orange. It's beautiful. There we go. So at least you can eat the orange after that. Not going to need it for anything else. Right, let's just get the zest out as much as possible. Now, the apple, um, I just need to quickly chop this up and peel it. Peel it first. So I've only got a small eating apple. I haven't got anything big. Um, just add a little bit more moisture. Um, as well as taste to your uh, hot cross buns. You can add more apple than this, uh, but this is what got delivered. <laughs> Tiny ones. So I'm just going to give these a bit of a cut up. And I'm just going to do small pieces. I don't want huge chunks. Um, I mean, if you, if you want chunks of apple in it, go for it. Um, but I'm going to dice these quite small so that they're, they don't take over in the dough. I just want little bits. So kind of bigger than matchsticks, but small. So I've gone one way, and then I'm just going to go the other and do half, half of it at a time. There we go. There's not bad starts with the Easter holidays, is it? If anyone's got the kids and the Easter holidays, it's rather sunny out there. We even went down to the beach yesterday and enjoyed a bit of sun. Oh, we got Vicky like apple would be lovely. Yes, I I think apple is a really good um, thing to add to. And actually, lots of people in America they use apple sauce in their cakes to add moisture um, quite a lot, not all the time, but. I think they use it more than we do in the UK. Right, last bits. Let's cut these up in little bits. 
I didn't do this in advance uh, of the workshop because um, apple brown doesn't it and I know if you want to keep it for later you can put apple juice and a bit of water over uh, apple juice lemon juice over it and a bit of water but that was quite fast so let's get rid of the skin so I don't put that in there we go and we're going to add that apple now I'm going to have to stand up and do this so I'm going to just move this up up oh, like so you see my head just about there we go right so I'm now going to stir this together now if you happen to have a mixer then uh, use it by all means get your dough hook into your mixer and um, and use that um, now I have got one I used it earlier um, but it's really noisy um, and, and you need to be able to hear me and I need to be able to talk to you so um, I'm doing it by hand now what I am going to do while we're kneading because this takes a few minutes is I'm going to put the hot cross buns I made earlier into the oven um, so that they are ready in 15 to, for, so I can show you how um, to finish them off and um, bear with me and it's quite a bit of a wet dough this so don't be frightened if it's a bit wetter all right can I have those ones please Evie that, that tray there thank you very much so you'll see these again don't worry but I've got more to show you so we do the cross together but those are just six of them so I can show you how to glaze them later I'm just going to put those in the oven uh, There we go. But I will come back to that. I just want to make sure that they're they're in and cooked so I can show you how to treat them a bit later. Right. So this dough, it is a wetter dough. Um, and what you don't want to do is to make it too dry. Um, you can add a little bit more flour if you find that it is really um, wet. But if I show you, can you see it's it's very sticky very sticky but give it some time i will work this on the worktop in a minute but i just want to just beat it up a bit in the bowl um, just to try and get it to start getting more elasticated and get uh, the glutens working um in the bread right. and and you know what we then earn a hot cross bun so really using my muscles in my arm for that right when you're wanting to i might have to i might have to kind of go lower for a minute so you can see what i'm doing on the side uh, so sorry if i've not got my head in shot for a second i'm going to put some flour on the work surface just spread it out a bit and then i'm going to tip this wet dough onto the flour Getting there. That's about right. Ooh. Bring that bowl over. I will scrape this down. Now, what I tend to do is try and keep it on flour and try and keep my hand a bit floured. It won't work. Inevitably, I will end up with flour everywhere. So I'm only going to do this one handed. So I've got another one spare when I need my hand to pick something up. But what you do is to try to do this from the side i'm going to pick the flour up and press it over itself turn it pick the flour up press it in on itself like so can you see what i'm doing so when it's getting a little bit easier to handle which it is you can see i've got a little bit of sticky dough on my hands then i will go to two hands but one i'm really using just to keep it in control but I love this process and I, th and I think mixes are wonderful because you can put dough in a mixer and go and do something else and they're an absolute time saver and if you don't have um, a bit of strength in your arms you know it is a really good way to keep being able to do things and let the machine do it for you 
But I love, I just find this kind of very therapeutic um, to make, to, to just do my own kneading. Although I have had kneading related injuries before and I got repetitive strain injury for doing it too much. But you can see it's kind of holding its own shape now. Now, if you do this in a mixer, I wouldn't recommend that you do it for more than seven minutes. If you're doing it by hand, you can't really over knead. So Charlotte's saying, if I use a machine with a dough hook, how long to use it for? And would I have to knead it like you are now? No, Charlotte. So if you're, well, if you're using a dough hook, um, I would say no more than seven minutes. Um, you might even be able to do it for more like five. Um, and then um, you need it to be in a ball. So obviously I'm getting this to pick up flour from the work surface. You, I saw, you saw how much I had on the work surface and now it's incorporated into that. So if you're going to keep it into the machine, you might need to just put a little bit more flour in until the machine forms the ball for you. And then no, you don't need to do this as well. You just need it to be in a ball. Um, you will need to bring it onto the work surface just to cut it into the buns, you know, the, the balls for the buns. But um, otherwise the machine does all the work. They're marvelous. Now that, you can see I'm, it's sticky. I can feel the stickiness, but it's not sticking to my hand. Does that make sense? So it, it's, it is a sticky dough. The more I'm handling it, the more it sinks into my fingers. It does, it does have a stickiness. It's definitely not dry. In fact, can you see it's starting in places? It's lifting. That's fine. That's that's not a problem at all. I'd rather that and have a nice moist hot cross bun um, than it being too dry. I'm going to just add a little bit just so I can place it down and it not stick too much to the work surface. But you can see that's a much thinner layer. Now, you can need it for longer, by the way. If you want to do a bit more kneading, go for it. What I'm going to do is I want to cut this into 12 pieces. I am useless when it comes to getting things to scale. So I'm going to go half, I'm gonna bring, so the, my ball, I'm gonna cut my ball in half, like so. I'm going to cut those ones in half. Ta-da. So I've now got four segments. And then I'm just going to make them into more even sausages. It looks a bit like um, those little baguettes, you know, the bread baguettes, those little tiny ones. So I've got that, and now I'm going to cut that into three. And I think, from memory, if you want to be really technical about the size of them, they're about 95 grams. So that's one ball, two balls. I will make them a bit tidier before I put them onto a baking tray. I hope I'm not going too fast for you guys, but you know, by all means, do come back to this tutorial and uh, re-watch. So more of them. If you think, goodness, I don't need 12 hot cross buns, you can freeze hot cross buns. Um, you could freeze the dough, you could freeze them made and um, or par cook them. Um, the other thing you can do is make them all, and it's a really good excuse when you think I'm not going to get through them, to make a hot cross bun bread and butter pudding. Um, and I have got a link for that. If you go to Boozy Baker's YouTube channel, there is a hot cross bun um, bread and butter pudding that you can follow. And I put on a custard recipe as well. So if you head over to our channel, um, you will find those as well. Right. I am a bit, I'm a bit covered in dough, so I'm just gonna wash my hands a little bit. Like so, although I think this is actually just making it worse. You know that feeling when you've got like flour and water and that kind of gluey feeling? It's never good. My son hates, really hates uh, kneading bread for this reason. But that's not, that's not too bad. Let's just get a dry cloth and work off the worst of it. Right, there, now, 
I've got a baking tray that I've put some parchment paper on. It's, it's not it's not grease or anything, it's just it's loose. It's just to stop them sticking. So oh thank you, Village Hall, for putting that on. Um yeah, and I think actually I did. I've got YouTube, but I've also our, our Facebook um our website, and there's all the recipes on there as well. Right, so each each ball I tend to go and make them into a circle and find the smoothest size side rather and make that your top if you think oh no it's all looking a bit like that pinch it together just pinch it together and create that smooth top and then oh, let's bring it down a bit so you can see you've got I think you do three by four and you just want little spaces in between so that they grow but I love it when hot cross buns actually you know when they when they've grown a bit then they touch and you have to tear them and I love that soft bread that you get in between so just give that find the side that I'm happiest with like there put that on smell the hot cross buns in the oven it's lovely i will come back to oven temperatures i promise i'm just having to go a little bit out of whack with my own kind of here's some i made earlier so they're nice and hot to be able to glaze them so I'll just add these to the tray I'm getting there Do you realise, guys, I now have, because I've done the here's some I made earlier, I've now got 24 hot cross buns to eat. Um, do you poke the dried fruit in so it doesn't burn? And no, I don't. You're welcome to, but they're, they're not going to bake for as long as you'd think. Um, so it doesn't really burn. Um, but you can if you wish. So... There's another one. Last three. There we go. Another one. There. Right, so once you've got them all on the tray, let's bring it up a bit and I'll bring these towards me now. So once you've got them all on the tray, um, these need to prove for about an hour. It does depend how, um, how cold or how warm your kitchen is, but I would say about an hour. Now you need to cover these either, I would say a damp tea towel, or I would use some thin film, but you don't want to really cover them tightly because you need to allow them to grow. So what i do i should do two things one i make sure that i cover them loosely but i also i use a bit of oil it doesn't have to be this spray oil this is just again a bit of my own laziness but if i spray this cling film with oil when it touches the hot cross buns they don't stick there's nothing worse when you've made bread and it's risen beautifully and it's touching the, the cling film and then you realise that when you pull it, it's tearing the bread. Thank you. Look. Right. So that's not tucked in, that's just loose. I know, I like that tip as well. So it's just loosely on top. I'm not going to tuck it around the tin or anything. I'm just going to leave those. I'm going to leave them to prove for about an hour. Um, and they should grow so that they're either touching or almost touching. Um, so I'm going to give those to Evie for a second. And if she doesn't mind, could you bring me out the here's some I made earlier? And we'll, we'll look at them when they've had about an hour proving. It's going all right, guys. We've got some in the oven, some proving, some that are need improving. There. There we go. 
bear with us. Thank you very much. So these, I split my last mitts into sixes, just so I didn't end up with 36 hot cross buns to eat. So can you see that they are touching now? They've grown and they're touching. Um, so what we need to do for these, it's missing something, it's missing our cross. So we need to add that next. So to do that, it's gonna get a bowl and you want to put in like a bit of flour, just plain flour or your bread flour is fine. So, you know, a couple of dessert spoons of that. Don't need loads to be honest. And then you want some water. Now, do it bit by bit, but I think you need twice as much water as flour. But let's test that theory. Three, four. We're going to make a paste. I know when we've held this before, some people have said, oh, we used to use marzipan uh, to go on top. Um, but I use bread dough. Um, yeah, that's about right. So I'm just mixing that up into a paste, like so. See that? And you want it to, to kind of not be too runny because we're going to pipe it onto our hot cross buns. Um, and we don't want it to run everywhere, but you need it to be soft enough that it's pipeable. So in true Blue Peter fashion, I've got some in a bag already from earlier. So I'm using, I've got disposable piping bags. I have lots of these because I'm a baker by trade and I use them all the time. If you don't, all I've done is I've, I've put some into the bag and I've just chopped a hole in the top just big enough that I get a thin strip of um, dough coming through. If you don't have one of these, it's not a problem. Just get like a sandwich bag, put your dough in and then cut the corner so you've got the same kind of thing as this. Now that's the hot cross buns coming out. Bear with me. Um, what we should, can we put them on there? Evie? Would you be happy to get them out yeah. for me? We're just going to put them on the side for a minute, and then we'll come straight to them. Right. So, with my piping, I'm going to come. I'm going to come right in. I'm going to lower the camera so you can see. All I'm going to do is start on one side, try and do it so you can see, and I'm going to go to the edge. I'm going to do it slowly. Um, I'm going to go down and I'm going to come up. I'm going to follow it around and come up. I'm really sorry if this is slightly misshapen, but I'm doing it at a really odd angle. There we go, like so. And then I'm going to do it again here. I'm going to start at the edge, come up and follow it like so. There we go, like that. And then you want to go the other way. Like so. Like that. Very good. Like so. There we go. So that is the, the crosses on it. And you can see it's a different colour because we've used the mixed spice in the buns themselves. So you do get that lightness because it's just a basic mix with nothing else added, no enrichments. Um, so they uh, can actually go in the oven. We might as well put them in. Um, and they, ooh, let's just see so you can see me. You'll cook your hot cross buns when they're proved and you've got the line on them. You can cook them at, um, Oh, bear with me, malfunction. It's me multitasking, it doesn't work sometimes. You can cook them at, for 15 minutes at 220 degrees Celsius, 200 uh, degrees for fan, um, and gas mark seven. Thank you, Vicky. Uh, yeah, they weren't too bad, were they, at an angle? So I'll show you the ones I made earlier. Thank you very much, Evie, for getting those out for me. So these, these are my ones. Here's them I made earlier. 
Um, so you can see those, they're nice and golden brown. It's actually, the oven's caught them ever so slightly, but they're just golden brown. They're not too dark at all. There we go. Can you see those? Now, you might think, oh, they look a bit dull. That is because we're going to glaze them next. So I've got some honey. If you don't want to use honey, you can use um, like a syrupy jam. You might need to heat it a little bit. But you're going to, I haven't actually heated this honey, but it is quite runny and these are very hot. So whilst they're hot, you just want to put the glaze on. And that kind of sinks in and sets. So it won't, I mean, they'll have a sticky nurse, but it won't be overly sticky. And you'll go, oh yeah, they, they look like hot cross buns now. Um, now ways to tell that your hot cross buns are done and they will actually, well, they look done, um, but they will sound hollow if you actually tap them um, on the back. I know, and they're really hot, so you have to be careful when you do that. But if you tap them, um, then they will sound hollow. So I'm just making sure I get to that side. I'm going to go along. Evie, do you like hot cross buns? Yes. Yes. So this first batch is going to go to Evie for being my star helper today. And uh, there we go. But I, I, I do love, do love baking. I love the smell of baking. And I just think things like Easter, it's such a great time to have a go. Um, uh, if you've got kids or grandkids, um, I think this... The, the only thing you've got, you can't see me properly, the only thing you've got is that you have a stickier mix. Um, but I think if either let the kids get sticky and messy and wash their hands up or or bring it to a point that it's a little bit more doughy. But it's such a nice activity to do as a family as well. Um, and I just think there's a sense of accomplishment making your own hot cross buns. It's the one thing you do this Easter. Have a go. Make sure as well to put your pictures onto the Virtual Village Hall website. It's great to see uh, how they look. So if you do have a go at this, please do show us your creations. And if you make any variations to them, maybe you do put some chocolate in or different, just show us. There we go, can you see those? Try not to burn my woo, fingers. There we go, Ow. they are quite hot. Tell you what, let's do a bit of a mixture. Let's do that and I'll tip them a little. There we go, guys. That is hot, oh dear me, there we go. I'll tell you what, let's pick one up. There, hot cross bun. They are steaming hot, so I don't advise you eat them until they're cooled down. And um, I would also say, um, put them on a rack. So if, you've, if you can, if you have one, once you've got them out of the oven, um, do put them on a rack, just so that they don't sweat because they're so warm. Um, you want them to kind of cool down underneath. You don't want them to kind of go soggy, like this bit of a Mary Berry, isn't it? But you want them to have soggy bottoms. You want them to have nice um, all the way round. Uh, but yeah, that's your hot cross buns. As I said, if you want, I obviously enjoy the hot cross buns as they are. But if you do find that you've got leftovers, then uh, do head over to our website or our YouTube channel. We've got recipes on there and you can make yourself a hot cross bun, uh, bread and butter pudding and some custard to go with them. Uh, but have fun making them and do share your photos. But that's it from me. Have a lovely Easter, everyone. See you later. Bye. <laughs> well, I did say bye, but we're not off, but... <laughs> well done. There. Amazing. Do I talk too fast? No. I think... <laughs>